Hello, my name is Ken Wright. In this presentation, we're going to be talking about a few of the biggest problems in mainstream science. I've picked 10. So that this presentation doesn't become too long, we can only spend just a minute or so on each one. I regard the very largest problem, the number one problem in all of mainstream science, is the problem that exists between relativity theory and quantum theory. Einstein's theory of relativity is the theory of our very big world, the world we live in, the world we are somewhat acquainted with, whereas quantum theory deals with that very tiny subatomic world that is out of range of our normal experience. Quantum theory is also known most often as quantum mechanics because there is no real theory of the quantum world. And so we work with the mathematics, the formulas that enable us to produce the amazing technology that we have in our world today. Quantum mechanics is probably the most successful theory that has ever been produced. Certainly the most productive. Well, these two theories ought to match up, but they don't. They don't connect mathematically. They don't connect philosophically. The differences between general relativity and quantum mechanics are so great that every attempt to reconcile them has so far failed. This from Technology Review. General relativity and quantum field theory are incompatible. This from Caltech. Well, from these two incompatible theories comes the Big Bang. The Big Bang is a theory that out in the void a little less than 14 billion years ago an infinitesimally small speck called a singularity also infinitely dense erupted. Now the void is a little hard to get your mind around because you see there isn't any space in the void. It's a nothingness like you cannot imagine. It doesn't have any space, no dimension, no time, no matter, no energy. Well, this little tiny singularity sitting out there in the nothingness erupted, creating space, time, matter, and energy. And just a few microseconds after this initial explosion came an even bigger explosion, which we call inflation, blowing everything out billions of light years. Well, the problem with this is that there's a lot of missing evidence. For example, what's a void? What's a singularity? Where does it come from? How does it develop? And what triggers that singularity to explode? What's the energy source? And inflation, where does that come from? And what's its energy source? And what is the physics for creating things from nothing? In no other fields of physics would this continual recourse to new hypothetical objects be accepted. But the Big Bang Theory can't survive without these fudge factors. This was a letter written in 2004 to the science community by 33 scientists from around the world and published in New Scientist. Since that time, several hundred additional scientists have signed on to this open letter. Well, what is our universe made of? It appears that the matter that we can detect is less than 5%. There's an additional 23% which we call dark matter, which we've never detected. We just surmise that it's there because of the amount of gravity that we can detect. And then there's a relatively new source of energy 
that we call dark energy because we have no idea what it is except it seems to be pushing our universe out faster and faster at an increasing rate. Well, that means 96% of the universe we haven't been able to detect. That's not a very good record for mainstream science. The sun's corona. Well, this is really a very interesting problem. You might not think it's a big problem, but it could be. Here is a picture of the sun. The sun is blanked out so that we can see the corona that surrounds the sun, that white stuff. Well, the surface of the sun is measured at 5,800 Kelvin. But the sun's corona is measured at 1 to 3 million Kelvin. Hundreds of times hotter than the surface of the sun. Well, why is this a problem? Well, it's a problem because of the way mainstream science regards how our sun and the stars are powered. You see, heat flows from hot to cold. So how does the corona become so much hotter than the surface of the sun if it's being heated by the sun? If it turns out that the corona is being heated from outside the sun, this could mean a whole big difference in understanding of what powers our sun and the stars. There is a contingent of scientists that believe that our universe is electric and that the stars and the sun are powered from electrical currents coming from outside. Gravity. What is gravity? There have been a lot of different theories. We all know how gravity affects us. Newton thought gravity was a force. Einstein said, nope, mm -mm, not so quick. Gravity is really just a warping of space, such that things in the neighborhood of a mass in space just follow the path of least resistance. So Newton says it's a force. Einstein says it's a matter of curvature in space-time. A problem in geometry. Quantum theory, which deals with all the other forces. Well, they don't know what to say so far. They would love to have their own theory of gravity the mysterious constants of nature. We talked about this in a previous presentation. Why is this a problem? Well, it's not a problem, except that we don't have any theory as to how these magic numbers have come to be and how they connect with each other. We only know these numbers by direct measurement. And we know that they're so precise that no life could exist anywhere in this universe except these numbers are precisely what they are. Consciousness. Well, we have a lot of theories as to what intelligence is. It's just mm, the way the brain is hardwired. Some people are better wired than others. But we have no theory about what consciousness is. Why do I see the universe through my eyes and not your eyes? Why am I different than you? This is a huge mystery in science. Quantum entanglement. Two particles come together and they get married, so to speak, such that when they're traveling apart, if one changes its state, the other knows it immediately. Immediately. This kind of disagrees with the theory of relativity 
that says that the speed of light is the fastest thing there is, including signals. So how does particle A signal particle B of its change of state instantly, even when they're separated by light years of distance? Brian Clegg, who wrote a book on quantum entanglement. Entanglement leaves common sense shattered. Inexplicable in normal terms, entanglement can reach instantaneously from one end of the universe to the other. It's the strangest effect in all of science. Biological development. How does a single fertilized egg become something as complex as a human being. The development of an adult organism from a fertilized egg remains one of the deep mysteries of biology. This from Timothy Newman, PhD in biophysics. So how does this little egg Divide and divide and divide and divide, each division creating a new generation of cells with new properties, seemingly knowing where to go, what additional things to accomplish, what their roles will be. It's a huge mystery. Well, was there a first cell? According to biologists today, there had to be a first cell because all the living matter today is constructed in such a similar way that they all had to evolve from one original first cell. All life on Earth evolved from a single-celled organism that lived roughly 3.5 billion years ago. Hmm. And however this cell developed, all the different theories seem to believe that it happened in a water-based primordial soup of chemicals. That things just by accident came together to produce this first cell. Did it happen out in the atmosphere? That's one theory. Did it happen out in the soupy seas? That's another theory. Did it happen down deep in the ocean near a smoker? That's another theory. And what about the genetic material that went into this first cell? The cell had to have it, and there had to be some sort of membrane surrounding this genetic material so that the cell could survive and replicate. Well, what about the genetic material? Today, anymore, the majority opinion is that it happened with RNA. There are some lesser opinions that the first cell genetic material was DNA. And even this bottom of the sea smoker theory is that the first cell somehow developed a protein. Let's see what the problems with each one of these are. First of all, RNA and DNA are made up of four different kinds of nucleotides. And there is agreed to be at least two to three hundred nucleotides in the simplest cell that one could imagine could have been the first cell. And these nucleotides have to be in just the right order. Well, the chances of 250 nucleotides coming together in the right order to form the first viable RNA molecule is 1 in 10 to the 150th power. Now, just to demonstrate how big a number 10 to the 150th power is, the estimated number of atoms in the whole visible universe is only 10 to the 80th power. Oh, and by the way, nucleotides can be produced in two different orders, right-handed and left-handed. 
And guess what? All the nucleotides that go into living things are right-handed. Isn't that amazing? Well, what about producing a protein by accident? Proteins are made up of long chains of amino acids. And these amino acids have to be in just the right order. Amino acids are water soluble and fully a third of those are hydrophobic which means not only are they water soluble they don't like water. So how in a water-based chemical soup would these amino acids come together to form a protein? But amino acids also come in left and right-handed versions. And guess what? All the amino acids that go into proteins are left-handed. How strange is that? Well, Francis Crick, Nobel Prize winner, is the co-developer of the DNA structure, stated that an honest man armed with all the knowledge available to us now could only state that in some sense the origin of life appears at the moment to be almost a miracle. So many are the conditions which would have had to have been satisfied to get it going. Robert Shapiro, professor of organic chemistry and PhD from Harvard, 125 publications on the origin of life and DNA and a Trotter Prize in Complexity, Information, and Inference, stated that the sudden appearance of a large self-copying molecule such as RNA is so vanishingly small that it's happening even once anywhere in the visible universe would count as a piece of exceptional good luck. Well, this is what I consider to be the biggest problem in mainstream science, and that would be the scientific method. Not that there's any problem with the scientific method. No, it's been a wonderful tool. But a lot of scientists think that the scientific method is the only way to discover truth and reality. And that's a problem. Because science is exclusively based on the philosophical concept of naturalism, which means that nothing supernatural is allowed. Well, if there is a spiritual side to reality, the scientific method is not going to be able to discover it. Is there a spiritual dimension to reality? Well, there's an awful lot of people in the world that think so but science refuses to recognize it. And so science is in a box, in a very, very big universe. And the box is walled in by naturalism. And the scientific method cannot work outside the box.